Today we're going to do a very simple program and it's simply going to be heads or tails and we're going to build it in Scratch and also in JavaScript. Right, let's get started. So open up your browser and Google Scratch MIT helps you get it straight away and also W3Schools and so we don't need that one anymore and just to get started script close script and we're going to be working in the body section and just run it okay so that's our two platforms ready to go so we'll go to create Okay, yeah, so we're going to do a simple heads or tails game. Now, this, this is very simple, uh, but the foundations are there for making decisions and comparing. And from this, you could, you could actually go on to something like a battleship game. So let's just get this down and hopefully this video will be, will be quite quick. So the first thing we're going to want is user input. And we want the computer to have a guess between two options. And the user guesses one of the options. If they get it right, then correct. If they get it wrong, it'll say try again. So let's have a think about how we would do this. The first thing is getting the user input. So in sensing, uh, let's just say heads or tails. That gives us a prompt box. So we can write heads. Now at the moment we can't see where our user input is and so what happened is Scratch creates this variable you can see here. And so if I put in tails, the variable changed to tails. Now what we need to do is work out how the computer thinks and adjust to that. Now how the computer is going to um, work this out as if we assign a value of one or zero for the computer guess. So let's call this one computer pick. Computer pick. So this is a variable and we're going to have the computer pick be either zero or one. So we want to set the computer pick to zero or one. So one way we can do that is to put a random between zero and one. Now let's start our program off here. So we've got the user input and we've got the computer pick. But before we do that, let's just take the user out. Let's just make sure that our random is working as we had hoped. So just keep checking here. You can see it's randomly cho choosing zero or one. And then what we can do is we can assign heads to zero or one to tails. If computer pick is equal to zero, then do something. So to test it out, we'll put in the say block and we'll say heads. So what should happen now is we we'll, it will either say one or heads. So it's picking zero and when it picks one, we haven't said to say anything yet. So then we can duplicate this. And if computer pick is equal to one, well, then we can say tails. So now we've at least got the computer's computer pick is either heads or tails. Now at the same time, when we start the game, we want the user to have an input and we're then going to compare those two.
So then what we might do just for the sake of comparison is at the end here, let's say our answer and let's say computer pick so we can see which is which. Now to do this properly, we need another operator block, which is the join one. This is what we call concatenation. So if we say your answer is whatever your answer is, and if we duplicate this one, and we'll say computer pick is okay, so we don't need that one anymore. We're going to set computer pick to heads. And if computer pick is equal to one, well then we're going to set computer pick to tails. So let's have a look at this now. And I'll take these off to get a better sense of how it looks. So heads or tails? If I put in heads, your answer is heads. The computer pick is tails. So then we can say they're different. You didn't get the right answer. Let's try it. We're going to try this again until we get the same match. Okay. So you can see that we have the option of uh, user input is one or two choices. The computer picks one or two choices. Now we've got to actually see them what happens if they match. So if if your answer matches computer pick, then something will happen. If your answer matches computer pick, well then we can simply say You guessed, you guessed it. Otherwise, if your answer does not equal computer pick, try again. I'm just going to have a look at what our variables are. But now let's have a look at building this in JavaScript. So we're going to write some pseudocode to start with. So we want to have user input, computer pick. User input is going to be a prompt box that says heads or tails. Computer pick is going to be random of zero or one. Now let's do the same assignment here. So we said zero is equal to heads. So if computer pick, I'm going to do two equal signs is equal to zero, then change variable value to heads instead of zero. And if computer pick is one, and then change variable value to tails instead of one, or if user guess is equal to computer pick then the code we want to run is we can say it's an alert you guessed it otherwise do an alert that says 
try again. Okay, so what variables are we going to need? The variables we had here was user input, which was a prompt box, and a variable called computer pick. Variable answer is a prompt. All right, that's the only code we've got running. That should work. So we, we can put in, yeah, we can't see where it goes. So what we can do now is go document.write, which is exactly the same as the say function in Scratch. Document.write, and what do we want to write? We want to write whatever is the value of answer. So if we write heads, that variable answer is going to have a value of heads. And then we're going to write to our document what is the value of that prompt box. So that's our user input. Now, computer pick random, or computer pick, has a random of one or zero. So in JavaScript, we have to build this random. So we've we'll go math dot random. Now I'll just show you what this looks like. Document dot write. I better do this um, variable rand test. Okay, so if I put in the value of rand test and I'll just comment out those ones for now. So at the moment we've got this variable called rand test and rand test is a, a random operator and it goes between 0 and 1 but it's never quite 1. So if we wanted to go, if we ignore all the rest of those and we just look at those first two numbers, you can see it's between 0 and 1. First thing we can do is put brackets around that whole operation and we can do a rounding with the math.floor. So what we've done there is we've gone math.floor, two brackets. Inside those brackets, we've got the math.random with the two brackets. Okay, now all that does is that rounds it down. Uh, we've only gone between 0 and 1, so we need to multiply. If we multiply that by 2, well, I'll show you on a bigger number. If we multiply it by 10, so we will never get 10, but we will we'll get between 0 and 9 eventually. If we wanted to go between 0 and 4. So we want to go between 0 and 1, so we'll do this. Okay, so we've built our random, very much like we did here. Pick random between 0 and 1 with this rand test. So we don't need this anymore. Okay, we can uncomment variable prompt. So now if computer pick equals zero, okay, so before we do that, let's call this computer pick so that we're doing the same thing. Variable computer pick Now, if computer pick is equal to, this is different to assigning a value, this is checking for comparability. If computer pick does equal zero, then we want to run this block of code. Two curly braces, back one, double enter. Now we want to go alert, two braces, and we want to, we'll just call this heads for now. 
Now because we've only got 0 or 1, we can just do an else statement. So otherwise, run this block of code, which is alert tails. Now let's see what is the value of computer.pick document dot right and we want to see what is computer pick it, it didn't alert called heads or it does tails Okay, so instead of doing the alert, what we want to actually do is change the value of computer pick will now be assigned a string of text called heads. Otherwise, change the value of computer pick to a string of text called tails. Okay, so that's working. We've got the user input, heads or tails. We've got computer pick random of one or zero. And okay, so now we've got if answer is equal is the same value as computer pick, then alert and put some braces around the condition. And because it's a string of text that we, we want to display, we're just gonna put quotes at the beginning of end and semicolon to finish that sentence. Uncomment that. Otherwise, we're going to alert another string of text. Didn't name that one the same. Try again. You guessed it. Okay, so if we didn't want to make an alert, we could document dot write. until I get an incorrect one. Okay, so there you have it. That's a, a, a simple uh, comparison program, but it actually will build a strong foundation. Um, I mentioned before, Battleship, it'd be far more complicated, but the foundations of this are there. If you can at least get a, an understanding of how the computer gets the user input, where it puts it, and then can compare it to something the computer generates, a lot of options will open up. Okay, I'm gonna close this video off. Thank you for watching.